Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at the elimination of unrealized gain or losses on depreciable asset. This is different from the first section. In the first section, we looked at non-depreciable asset. So th in this session, we have to deal with depreciation. This is part two of five, which is we have the previous uh, session. And I suggest you view the previous session if you are not very comfortable with the topic. This topic is covered in advanced accounting and an advanced accounting course also covered on the CPA exam, specifically the FAR section. Additional lectures similar to this one can be found on my website. Now, before we start, I would like to tell you, I really like to connect with my viewers, with my followers, with my subscribers. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I do post lectures as well as other information about accounting, accounting career, the CPA exam, and related topics. If you're a Facebook user, please connect with me on my Facebook page, Accounting Lectures. Obviously, my uh, all my lectures are housed on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to my YouTube and please share and like my YouTube uh, so others can benefit as well. If you are a Twitter user, this is my Twitter handle. Also, obviously, my website is also another resource for you. So the first thing we're going to look at is the overall picture. What are the rules that we have to deal with when we are dealing with intercompany sale of depreciable property? So here's what's going to happen. The overall idea is this. We have the parent company and we have the subsidiary. So the parent might sell the, the, the subsidiary or the subsidiary might sell to the parent assets. And as a result of this exchange, one of these parties might have a gain or might have a loss. So we'll have a gain or a loss. We call those gains and losses intercompany gains and losses. And when we prepare the consolidated financial statement for both the parent and the subsidiary, any intercompany gain and losses need to be eliminated. That's one thing. And we learned this in the prior session. Also, we have to keep the original cost of the assets. So if P company sold the sub, when we report the original cost of the asset, we have to report it based on what P purchase the asset at, not what sub purchase it from the from the uh, parent. Also, if sub sold something to P, we report the asset at the original cost of the sub because that's the original cost for the affiliated group. So those are the things that we, we talked about in the prior session, but now let's go over the rules. So we only report gains and losses that, that are the result of a sale of depreciable asset to outside party. So any gain and losses intercompany, which is inside parties, are eliminated. Also, part of the elimination entries is to present the asset, the property, and the consolidated balance sheet at the cost, at its cost to the affiliate. So it's its original cost, whatever that cost is to the affiliate. So if the sub sold it, it's the original cost of the sub. If the P sold it, we have to go back and report it at the P cost. Also, so this is one and two. We already covered one and two in the first session. Now this is new. The third point is new. Three, we need to present accumulated depreciation, which is which is an important concept in this session in the consolidated balance sheet based on the cost of the affiliated group. So remember, we are dealing with depreciable asset. And when we have depreciable asset, guess what? We are going to have, when we have depreciable asset, we're going to have accumulated depreciation. So what we are saying is the accumulated depreciation will have to be reported based on the original cost. And we're also going to have depreciation expense. We have depreciation expense because we have we have to depreciate this asset. When we compute depreciation expense, the depreciation expense will have to be based on the original cost. Why? Because we have to report the asset in the consolidated financial statement at the original cost. Okay, so those are the four things. And keep the slide, copy the notes on the slide because you're gonna see we're gonna have to prepare the journal entries to comply with those rules, to make sure those rules are complied with. Also, we have to learn about something new in this session. It's something called realization through usage. And what is realization through usage? So remember, when we sell, when, when a firm sells property or, or equipment to an affiliate, the price will differ from the book value. And because it differ, what's going to happen, we're going to either have a gain or a loss. So we're either going to have a gain, a G, or an L a gain or a loss. Now remember, we have to eliminate the gain or the loss. That's understandable. However, what we're going to have to do, if there is any gain or loss, okay, 
what's going to happen? The gain or the loss will be realized through a decrease or increase in depreciation. What does that mean? Okay, let me explain this to you, and we're going to see some numbers later on. From the viewpoint of the consolidated entity, the intercompany gain or loss is considered to be realized so we're going to realize it from the use of the property or equipment in the generation of revenue. So simply put, we're going to recognize some of the gain and some of the losses. But how are we going to recognize it? You will see later through the, uh, the use is measured through depreciation adjustment. So we're going to do adjustment to depreciation. What does that mean? If we have a gain, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to be depreciating, we're going to be reducing depreciation expense and you will see that so depreciation expense is reduced and as we reduce depreciation expense simply put when your expense goes down you have more gain when we have a loss we are going to increase depreciation expense and you will see how when depreciation goes depreciation expense goes up when depreciation ex expense goes up you will recognize the loss you will recognize the loss but we're going to be doing so in pieces because remember depreciation is not taken all at once, it's taken over the years. So the gain and the losses will be realized through depreciation adjustment. Just know this rule and you will see this in an example. And I will tell you this is the rule that you need to be aware of. Also, what are, what's involved in the work paper elimination entries before we look at an example? Firm using the cost or partial equity method. An additional objective is to equate beginning consolidated retained earning with the amount in the, of the consolidated retained earning reported in the prior period. Simply put, every period we have to start with the, the beginning retained earnings. And you'll see how we do so. For you, for, comp, for firms using the complete, complete equity method, this objective is not necessary because the parent retained earning already reflect all the adjustments. And for upstream sales, the entries will also serve to equate beginning NCI and prior NCI. Again, we'll look at an example later, but those are the rules that we have to follow. So the best way to illustrate this is to work through an example, is to work through an example. So let's take a look at this example. And for the illustration of this example, we're going to be using, assuming we're using cost or partial equity. And let's take a look at this example. We have P Company, Powell Company, owns 80% of the outstanding stocks of SUP. On June 30th, it's important to know the date because that makes a difference on the depreciation. Sullivan Company sold equipment to P Company for half a million. The cost to Sullivan Company is 750. So, so Sullivan had a cost of an asset of 750 and had accumulated depreciation of 400. So they had accumulated depreciation. So they depreciated this asset over the years for $400,000. Okay, what does that mean? It means once we have depreciation, once we have accumulated depreciation, we can take cost minus accumulated depreciation, cost minus accumulated depreciation, so 780, 780 minus 400,000, it's going to give us the 780 minus 400,000 it's going to give us the book value of the asset. So the book value of the asset, the difference between those two, it's 380,000. That's the book value. That's the book value of the asset. So the book value, sorry, my pen is not working properly, equal to 380. Now, we sold it. The selling price was half a million. So S company sold it for half a million. That's mean we have a gain for the subsidiary for 120,000. So the gain for the subsidiary is 120,000, okay? So the management of P company estimated that equipment has a remaining life of four years. This is important from June 30th. So they're gonna depreciate it based on four years. So that's important for us. In 2012, P company reported 300,000 and S company reported 200,000 in net income from their independent operations, including sales to affiliate, but excluding dividend or equity from income from the subsidiary. So this way they're telling us how much income they reported and how we measure that income. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna record the transaction on the books of the parent company and on the books of the subsidiary. So the parent bought the asset, they paid $500,000 for it. They debit equipment, 500,000, they credit cash, 500,000. Sullivan Company sold the asset. Well, if they sold the asset, they would receive cash of 500,000. They would remove the equipment from the books at 780,000, they would remove accumulated depreciation of 400,000, and they will book a gain, which I showed you how to compute for 120,000. 
Now, you might be asking why did he highlight those three entries in red? Look, what we have to do year after year is to do, is to do the following. Year after year, we have to make sure the equipment is restored to, to 780, accumulated depreciation is restored to 400,000, and we have to remove this gain. And the reason that, that's why I highlighted those three entries. So this is the entries that takes place. This entries took place on June 30th for both companies. But the end of the year, what we have to do, we have to prepare a consolidated balance sheet or consolidated financial statement, not only a balance sheet. As a result, what we have to do, we have to restore the asset. Now the equipment is recorded at 500,000 at P company. That's incorrect. We have to restore the equipment back to 780,000. We eliminated 400,000 of accumulated depreciation. We have to go back and put that 400,000 on the books. And we have a gain that we have to eliminate. Now the cash will basically cancel each other. Credit cash, debit cash. Well, what's gonna happen when we consolidate, they're gone. Okay, so in order to do so, so the first thing we have to do at the end of the year, and this is basically a good schedule to follow. Remember the original cost is 780, the selling price is uh, 500,000, therefore there's a difference of 280. Now the equipment is worth 280 less on the books. So the first thing we have to do is debit the equipment at the end of the year. So this is December 31st, 2011. So we have to restore the equipment back to 780, why? because the equipment now sitting on the the parent company the parent company books at 500,000 at it's sitting on the books at um, 500,000 okay so if we look at the books of the parent company so this is the parent company asset well that's incorrect why because the asset needs to be reported at 780 why? Because we need to restore it. We need to report it in the consolidated financial statement at the its original cost, which is 780. Therefore, we debit equipment 280,000. Now, remember, when we sold the asset, the subsidiary had an accumulated depreciation of 400,000. Then, what they did when we when they sold the asset, they debited accumulated depreciation. Therefore, accumulated depreciation went down to zero. Guess what? We have to restore accumulated depreciation therefore we have to go back and credit we have to go back and credit accumulated depreciation for 400,000 therefore we're going to credit accumulated depreciation of 400,000 okay so we have to put the book on the books accumulated depreciation and remember we booked a, we booked a gain of 120 which is we also we have to eliminate the gain and what do we do to eliminate the gain because this is an intercompany gain we debit the gain therefore we debit the gain 120 and we credit accumulated depreciation and what did what did we just do what did we just do we just restore eliminate the intercompany gain and restore the equipment to its original cost this is how we remove the gain because remember we had the gain here s company reported the gain right here we need to take out and we did so then we needed to debit the equipment to 80 to make sure the equipment back to 780 and we need to put back accumulated depreciation now this entry will have will, will 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 occur at the end of every year going forward however the gain will not be with us because the gain will be closed by the end of the year remember the gain the gain is, is a temporary account so the gain will be closed to what account will be closed it will be close to retained earnings so what happened going forward we are going to be debiting retained earning to eliminate the effect of the gain from the consolidated financial statement and we always have to go back assuming we, we haven't sold the equipment we have to go back and restore the equipment and restore accumulated depreciation okay so now oh before we proceed let me show you what's going to happen here Remember, when the asset was on the books of the subsidiary, the asset has a cost of 780000 and they were depreciating the asset at $95,000 per year. Okay, that was the based on the, on the life of the, uh, of the asset. There were four years remaining, and they're supposed to depreciate the asset 95000 95000 95000 Now, once the asset is on the books of the subsidiary, the depreciation became based on the because they bought it at 500,000 so their cost is 500,000 
And if you divide 500,000 by 4, if you divide 500,000, if you take 500,000 and you'll divide 500,000 by 4, that's equal to 125. Therefore, the sub will be depreciating the asset for 125 on their books. The original depreciation amount was 95,000. Now, bear in mind, we are not giving detail of how the what's the original life of the asset maybe we are maybe we are not but it doesn't matter the original depreciation was ninety five thousand um, um no we were not told but 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 no that it's ninety five thousand okay so what does that mean it means we're going to have excess depreciation of thirty thousand because the sub what's going to happen the sub company they're going to depreciate this as i'm um, sorry the parent company will start to depreciate this asset and how would they depreciate this asset well for every year they will depreciate it by uh, 125,000 so every year what's going to happen the parent company they will debit depreciation expense 125 credit accumulated depreciation 125 let me tell you about what's wrong with this entry this entry is overstating depreciation depreciation is supposed to be only 95 because we depreciate the asset based on the original cost based on the cost of the affiliate what does that mean it means we have per the whole year for the whole year we have 30,000 of excess depreciation so now we have to journalize an entry to reverse this effect now bear in mind for year one for year one we bought the asset june 30th it means we only have half a year to take care of therefore half a year if thirty thousand dollars for the whole year for a half a year we need to remove only fifteen thousand therefore what we have to do is to de de debit accumulated depreciation fifteen thousand credit depreciation expense fifteen thousand why did we do so because the parent company is booking one hundred and twenty five thousand of depreciation per year which is thirty thousand dollar per year in excess of the original cost of the original depreciation but for year one we only have to reverse fifteen thousand why fifteen thousand because for year one we only had the asset for uh, six out of the 12 months now this is what i meant by when i originally told you realization through usage by reducing depreciation expense what we did is basically we we recognize we recognized again we recognized again whoops we recognized again okay by reducing depreciation expense in 15,000 we recognize again and this is what we meant by realization through usage this this slide here when I told you I will show you what it means and this is what we meant by realization through usage what we do is as we adjust depreciation we recognize some of the gain now if we had the loss obviously if 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 the transaction had a loss, the entry will be the opposite. Why? Because then we'll have to debit depreciation expense because we had a loss to basically, in quote, amortize or spread out. Okay? So that's hopefully you understand what we meant by uh, uh, realization, uh, uh, adjustment through realization. So the, to adjust depreciation expense to the correct amount, thus realizing a portion of the gain through usage. This is what we mean by realizing portion of the gain through usage so this is all the entries that we need in 2011 okay let's review them again uh, by the end of the year we eliminate the gain restore the asset and restore accumulated depreciation then we have to book another entry to fix end quote to fix or adjust depreciation and here since we had a gain on the entry to adjust depreciation we're going to recognize some of the gain by reducing depreciation expense notice we credited depreciation expense we reduced depreciation expense now december 31st 2012 this is a year a year later a year later remember the cons uh, the work paper entries are not permanent therefore they're gone now by the end of the following year we have to do the same thing and what's the same thing do three things remove the gain the $120,000 gain, restore the asset, and restore depreciation. So basically what we have to do by the end of 2012, we have to go back and do the same thing as we did in 2011. Remember, the gain is gone, so all we have to do now is adjust the beginning retained earnings. So here's what's going to happen. 
We're going to debit, and again, we're using the cost and partial equity here. We're going to debit equipment, 280000 to bring the equipment back to its original cost on the consolidated financial statement. We need to debit retained earnings. Now, what's going to happen now is this. Remember, we own only 80% of the, of the subsidiary. Therefore, we debit beginning retained earning, 80%, and we debit non-controlling interest to make sure the non-controlling interest is updated to remaining 20%, which is 24,000. But in total, this is 120. But remember, some of the gain went to the NCI, which is 24,000. Therefore, we have to take out of OCI 24,000. Then we restore depreciation by crediting accumulated depreciation. So we have to prepare this entry to basically bring everything back to the original st st status. Now, are we done yet? No, we still have to do another entry. And what's the other entry? Remember, we have to adjust depreciation. Because what happened is this for year two for year two the parent company debited depreciation expense 125 credited accumulated depreciation 125 remember they are, they are for the full year for 2012 we had the asset for the full year therefore depreciation expense is 125 therefore depreciation expense is thirty thousand dollar an excess of the original depreciation what do we have to do we have to reduce depreciation expense by $30,000. That's the first thing we have to do. Therefore, we debit depreciation expense $30,000. And what we just did, we just, we are also, what we are doing is we are preparing this entry here in a sense, but this is for $30,000 to, to adjust depreciation expense to the correct amount, thus realizing a portion of the gain. We're doing the same thing here. So what I did is I Debited depreciation expense thirty thousand dollar. What do I do? I I I debit. Um, I credit depreciation expense. I credit accumulated depreciation thirty thousand dollar. So that's for the current year. That's for the year two. Now remember, what we have to do, we have to reverse the fifteen thousand of depreciation of the prior year. What does that mean? Remember in the prior year. This was part, this was part of the work papers, okay? And basically, this will be gone. So this, this will be gone in a sense that it's not permanent. This entry is not permanent. What we have to do in year two, we have to restore this. We have to restore this entry. And how do we restore this? We're going to debit accumulated depreciation. We're going to debit. We're going to debit accumulated depreciation. 15,000 and you might be asking hold on a second why don't I just debit accumulated depreciation it's okay I'm just showing you what's happening here so I'm gonna have to debit accumulated depreciation um, 15,000 then credit beginning retained earning for not for the full 15,000 I'm gonna spread it 12,000 for the parent company and NCI will absorb 3,000 and what's this entry for this entry to to update to update our consolidated financial statement to make sure the 15,000 of the prior year is accounted for okay so simply put can we consolidate those two entries sure rather than having two accumulated depreciation we're going to have one so let me just show you the consolidated entry and not the consolidated the compound entry of the consolidated entry okay so we're going to debit accumulated depreciation 45 credit depreciation expense credit beginning retained earning and credit non-controlling interest this is what i had earlier so this thirty thousand is for the current year and those fifteen thousand is from the prior year but remember what we have to do now make sure you for the prior year you update the beginning retained earning 80 percent to the beginning retained earning of p and three thousand which is twenty percent of the non controlling interest and this is using the cost or the partial equity method now if we're using the full equity method the complete equity method what's going to happen is okay this is the entry to restore the asset to restore accumulated depreciation and what we do is we debit investment in s company rather than beginning retained earnings so notice we debit investment rather than uh, rather than beginning retained earning for 96 okay because the investment is is reflecting everything and the second entry what we do is we also rather than the beginning retained earning we credit the investment we credit the investment account because everything is reflected in the investment account 
Okay, so this is basically to show you if you're using the equity method. Okay, now what happened if this was a downstream sale? So let's just flip the positions. Now what's going to happen? The parent company is selling to the subsidiary. What would change if we if we're using the partial or the cost equity? Okay, the non-controlling interest of twenty percent will be included in the beginning retained earning of P company. Simply put, let me go up here. This non-controlling interest will be gone, and this will be. 15,000 okay this is if we're using the cost of the partial or the cost or the partial equity method if we're using the complete equity method non-controlling interest of 20 percent will be included in the investment in Sullivan this one here will be included with the 15,000 simply put because we're going from the parent to the subsidiary there is no, we don't differentiate between the controlling and the non-controlling interest in a downstream sale. So there is no differentiation between the controlling and non-controlling interest when we're going from the parent company to the subsidiary. Okay, it, it's only we differentiate when we're going upstream from the subsidiary to the, from the subsidiary to the parent company. This is when we differentiate. Hopefully, um, this example kind of gave you more knowledge, a little bit more flexibility with learning this if you have any questions email me this topic is covered on the exam on the cpa exam study hard and if you want additional lectures go to my website if you happen to go to my website please consider donating thank you very much study hard for the exam it's worth it